Hello everyone and welcome to episode 19 of my Dark Souls video walkthrough. Today we'll be heading into the Duke's archives. This is one of the areas we've opened up last time by handing in the Lord Vessel. And the reason I'm going here is mostly because my sorcery based characters will be getting their final endgame gear in this, um, in this area. And none of my other characters have anything they desperately need. They're not all finished yet, but but they're fine, basically. So if you're playing a sorcerer, I would recommend going here as soon as you can. So as soon as you've handed in the Lord Vessel. For other characters, I would say it's kind of optional when you do it. Now in this corridor here, there's another one of these armored boars. We've already encountered one of them very early on in Undead Parish. These are a lot tougher though. And you can no longer backstab them. They have an additional piece of armor on their posterior. So, no backstabs anymore. Um, they are still very, very resistant to physical attacks. So if that's what you're relying on, I am going to show you the tactic that I would recommend. And this would also work if the other boar was still following me. You can just run past him and then you go into this corner. And you do this because the boars can't get to you. They cannot get past those pillars. And then you can use some ideally a long weapon so you can stay out of range of their um, of their attacks and you can just kill them there's only one here because i killed the other one slowly but this is the way to go especially if you're using a low damage weapon because only when both of the boars are dead can you light and use this bonfire which is quite handy because the next section can definitely kill you quite easily it's somewhat nasty and um, yeah, having this bonfire is very, very convenient. Keep in mind the boars do not respawn, so you only have to kill them once. And then we go up this elevator. Now, as you're going up the elevator, I would suggest hiding here in this right uh, in this left-hand corner. And that's because if you're standing right in the middle of it, there will be enemies that spot you straight away, and. You don't want to fight more than one of these at a time. They can be somewhat nasty. See, there's one around the corner. I was trying to see if I could alert him using a sound, but sadly no such luck. So I'm stepping out just a little bit to make the enemy further in the back on the stairs aggro onto me. Now one thing to be aware of is that while you're on the elevator here, you cannot perform backstabs and reposts. It's just a quirk of the game's engine because the elevator is a moving platform. You just don't get backstabs on it and reposts. It's just something to deal with. Um, I've seen lots of people wonder why they can't get backstabs there. It's just because it's literally impossible. Now these crystal hollows may look weak but they actually pack quite a punch and um, they're also fairly resistant to damage so do not take them lightly they can definitely cause some trouble now this character luckily has a lightning weapon And there is um, on the right next to that golem, which you can see on in the distance, there's yet another of the crystal hollows. So if you just run up and then run back down, you can aggro him. In this case, I got one further hollow from from back in the in the main room, but uh, yeah, luckily I managed to handle that somewhat well. Generally, the reason this area can be quite nasty is because it's easy to over aggro. And there is the archer and a sorcerer or a channeler rather using sorcery. Um, two enemies spamming projectiles at you can definitely cause problems and the channeler can still use his ability to buff the crystal hollows. So as you can see the, that guy has a bit of a blue particle effect around him. And that increases their damage output so they, they really do have a lot of damage. Now this golem is actually very important for the DLC. And this only works if you have killed the Hydra 
and killed the golem that spawns after the hydra, inside of which is Dusk of Udasil. If you have saved Dusk, then this golem will drop the broken pendant. He will still be there if you haven't, but he will not be dropping the broken pendant. And the broken pendant is required to enter the DLC area. So, if you want to do that, you have to have saved Dusk by this point. Now you can obviously come back here later if you haven't saved Dusk now and you don't get the broken pendant. You, you haven't messed anything up permanently, but um, yeah, if you've done it beforehand, then you don't have to return, which is obviously nice. But uh, if you if you didn't get the pendant, then it's not the end of the world. You're not missing out, um, really. You just have to go back here eventually. Now, while you're messing around under the stairs here, the archer elbows from above cannot hit you. But it happens quite often that they sort of run down the stairs when, while trying to get to you. And this is actually very convenient because it allows you to get to them easier without having to run up the stairs where it's all quite open and um, there's not much cover and you have multiple enemies shooting at you. And here you can see the nasty ability of the channelers to teleport. And they will teleport further back, obviously. And the less damage you deal to them, basically, the more hits it will take you to kill them, and the more likely it is that they will teleport away, away multiple times even. And you just have to keep dealing with them, dealing with them, and he will keep shooting at you, and you get one attack in, and then he teleports behind the next enemies. It can be quite annoying, and they actually do quite a bit of damage, so again, another reason why this section can be quite troublesome. And depending on if you've killed the channeler or not, this up here on top of these stairs would be his next location. Now, it's also quite a common trap in this particular section of the game to have these crystal hollows standing right around a corner and you're heading straight towards something else and they just jump at you from the side or sneak up on you from behind. It happens quite often and it's quite aggravating, so be prepared. On the plus side though, you can still parry, repose and backstab them. While they can drop stuff, the only thing that's really of any value at all is the Caduceus Kite Shield, which you can also buy from, I believe, the uh, Undead Mail Merchant, or maybe it's Andre of Astora, the first blacksmith. Um, yeah, and their drops are generally kind of useless. And then this chest is a Mimic, and he drops the Crystal Night Shield. This is just a standard Night Shield upgraded to the Crystal Path, just like the Crystal Halberd we found earlier on in Anno Londo. But yeah, there is now another elevator to go up. Generally, this first section doesn't really contain any interesting loot. Aside from the Mimic, really all you get is souls and upgrade items. So it's not really that cool of an area, but next episode we will get to see some, some nice stuff. This NPC is somewhat random, it's the only one of its kind. He uses a crystal set and uh, crystal weapons and a shield, but uh, yeah. Obviously this Pyromancer has a ton of damage and had a very easy time with him. You can also just parry him or lure him into the more open area and um, fish for backstabs. Right now for this boss fight I would suggest equipping the Ring of Sacrifice which means you don't lose your souls when you're dying. And it is also uniquely the only boss fight in the game that you can just walk out of. This is a two-way fog gate. And the reason is quite simple. This is a supposed to lose fight. You cannot defeat this boss at this point. He is literally immortal. And this applies even if you hack the game and set your damage to a billion, so you one hit everything. 
he cannot be killed. And obviously there, there are story reasons for this. You're meant to walk in here and you're meant to die. Um, this is not just a case of needing a special item that you only get later on. This is basically the, um, the way it's supposed to be. And you wake up not at the previous bonfire that you used, but inside this prison cell, which conveniently has a bonfire, which also indicates that Seath is probably the smartest enemy in the game, because, well, he's not that smart because he put the guard there, which has the key, but uh, at least he figured out that to capture an undead, you have to put a bonfire in the same cell so he can't just kill himself and get out. We see a nice little cutscene. Um, it should be noted that even though we have unlocked the ability to warp between bonfires, that is not going to work from this particular bonfire. There's a limited set of bonfires we can warp to, and we can warp away from almost all bonf bonfires, except for the ones that are in positions where we're meant to be trapped. And this is one of those positions. We're meant to be trapped here. So we can't just teleport out of this prison. Now you will hear the rather eerie music, which also drives these pisakas somewhat mental. And they're coming up the stairs to try and kill you. And that's why the snakes are running away. Most of the time they won't even try a single attack, they will just run past you and try to basically run out of the prison. Even though they can't, the door is locked, but still. They, they climb up the ladder up there. And these guys, well, they look a bit scary. They're not actually that bad. They have a grab attack that can do a lot of damage, but it's also quite easily spotted and well telegraphed. But more importantly, they have no poise, so they stagger from pretty much anything. And that means even with a low damage weapon, you could just stun lock them. And also they're coming up the stairs in small groups of one or two. And here you can see the grab attack, by the way. It, uh, it does decent damage, but most characters should not be one hit by it and again you just have the ability to stun lock them very very easily down here it's a little more difficult because there's four of them basically standing in the same spot and there you go another grab attack um, it is somewhat well telegraphed but when there's so many of them and such a mess of tentacles I sometimes find it quite difficult to spot the but yeah, even my low vitality characters did not get one shot when they got hit by it. Alright, now let's deal with the music first before we head in, the, in there. So we want to hide, sorry, head up this ladder. And when we're up the ladder, we will take just a tiny little step and then go straight back down. And this is just the easiest way to deal with these three snake men standing all in the same location because then they basically come down the ladder one by one and you can backstab the first one and the sorcerer snake lady will come down also sometimes only the um the sword wielding guy will come down in which case you should climb up the ladder, run for the sorcerer or the mage and kill her before dealing with the other sword wielding snake man or man serpent as they are properly called. Now once you've killed them, there's a chest in the back which you need to get out of the prison. And you can then use the lever to turn the music off. This means that the next time you get into this area, the Pisakas will not be mad, they won't be coming up the stairs, and they will be a lot more docile. Keep in mind that if you die on your way down here, the music also stops, for some reason. I don't know if that's a glitch or intended, but basically if you die while trying to get down the stairs, then you will revive at the bonfire and the music will have stopped. 
Now these two here are non-aggressive and you could just hear them cry a little bit. There's law reasons for that I won't get into. But they are non-aggressive even if you hit them they will not defend themselves. And we know this guy by the way. And they also don't respawn and are guaranteed to drop soothing sunlight and bountiful sunlight. Hello again. What a chance meeting this is. Alas, I'm imprisoned once again. I don't suppose you could stage me a getaway. The archives. Such a storehouse of knowledge. So close, but just out of reach. The thought offends me so I could simply die. As a student of the arts, you understand me, eh? Okay. And that's all we can do for him right now. We don't get the key to open his cell until, well, next episode. Most likely, at least. And now we are going to be able to open all the other cells that I just ran past on the way down. And it's just, it's just more convenient that way. You can kill the crystal hollows in these cells through the door. Most weapons will have hitboxes that can go through the doors or even the bars next to the door. It doesn't have to be the actual door bit. And the enemies conveniently walk up to the door and you can just kill them. It is quite handy for not wanting to fight them. Um, you can still do it, but there's no need. So this first cell contains the extra key which we need to open some of the other cells. I would also recommend you close the door behind you, because if ever you go into this area again, the door will be closed and the crystal hollows inside can't get to you. This cell here is completely empty, it just has a way where you can jump down into the previous cell, but since we've also looted that already, there's no point. Okay, The third cell has no enemies in it whatsoever. And only a soul item. And again, close the door behind you. Wouldn't matter for this one, but might as well make a habit of it. And here we have another hollow behind the door. And just as before, you can attack him through the door from absolute safety, making it quite easy. And this is another cell that's completely empty. So once again we close the door behind ourselves, it's just polite anyway. Now, a few more secrets to find when climbing up this ladder. We now have the key to get out, but I won't show you that until next episode. For now we will stick to staying in the prison. Can walk across these planks here. And this jump is a bit finicky but you can hit the planks down below. If you don't jump correctly you can bounce off and die but with a bit of practice it'll be fine. And there you can get a seance ring and the maiden set. Again this has law reasons I won't get into just to accept that they are there. And now finally in the cell in which we've despawned, there's three crystal hollows towards the back. If you approach them carefully, you can separate them. The, the other two are a little harder to separate, but it can still be done. Didn't manage it here, but at least they died in a single combustion. And you can now open this with the extra key and drop down below for another soul item. All right, that was it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. As always, leave me some feedback if you have any. Have a good day and bye bye.